Welcome to the political jungle. This week, we are thrilled to have with us Megan Sullivan, who won the Republican primary for Superior Court. The Pennsylvania Superior Court has one vacancy, and Meg Sullivan will face Tamika Lane in November. Welcome to the political jungle, Megan Sullivan. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me, Steve. This is a, this is a great opportunity, so I appreciate it. You got it. Um, uh, and we're hoping that at the end of our uh, half hour that the voters of Pennsylvania will have a little bit better idea about who you are, uh, since it's hard with COVID to get around to every single neighborhood and meet people face to face. So this should be fun. Uh, first of all, what do you prefer, Meg or Megan? Or what? what do you, what's your preference before you become your honor? <laughs> Either Meg or Megan. But you know, since we've already met each other, and then I and I know you, Steve, Meg is fine. Great, great. Um, and what would your mom and dad call you growing up? Oh, Were you Megan? So my dad's nickname for me was Goose, <laughs> and my mother's name nickname for me was Meggie, which oh, had to, which stopped at about the age of twelve when she was uh, coaching me in intramural soccer, and she would yell it from the sidelines. I was like, "Mom, really?" <laughs> but uh, and mongoose or goose came from mongoose because I had a uh, a love of uh, the book by Rudyard Kipling, Ricky Ticky Tabby, and that was a, a mongoose. And so my dad called me his little mongoose, and then that got shortened to goose. That's beautiful. Well, you are <laughs> must be comfortable here in the political jungle, then. That's for sure. <laughs> so you were uh, born in and raised in Chester County. No, actually, I was born and raised in Philadelphia. Ah, yes. yes. Okay. I, uh, I was born and raised in Jun the Juniata Park section of Philadelphia uh, and uh, only moved out of Philadelphia uh, after law school, after I graduated from law school and um, moved out with my husband to Chester County. And I, I guess that was in about 2000. So okay. since 2000, I've been in Chester County. Now, let's go back to your childhood a bit, just for a bit. You're in Philly. Where did you go to school? So I went to the local um, parish, uh, parochial school, Holy Innocence high, uh, grade school. Mm -hmm. Your brothers or sisters? Years. Yes, I have two younger brothers, uh, Brendan and Brian. Ah, and uh, so Brendan and Brian and Meg. Um, That's great. What happened to the Bs? <laughs> or, or what happened to the M? I guess right. when they made you, they broke the mold, right? Yeah. Right. Well, I was the first and I was the only girl and I was made to feel it all of my life. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the two boys got middle names. I, I don't know why I didn't get a middle name. I took a, a confirmation name that I made my middle name. But um, yeah, I don't know. My mom always treated uh, the girl, me, differently uh, that way. <laughs> now, are, are you, is Sullivan your family name or is that your married name? Oh, uh, that's my maiden name. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Okay, great. So um, then where'd you go from Holy Innocence? So from Holy Innocence, I went to Nazareth Academy High School, which is uh, up in the greater Northeast. And that shares the campus with uh, Holy Family College. It's right behind Holy Family College. So, um, and that was a, an all girls uh, private Catholic high school. And I went there for nine through 12. Okay. Uh, but then you, you you shifted a little bit for college. You still stayed in the Catholic system. You went to St. Joe's. I did. I went to St. Joe's University. I had a, a theater scholarship, um, a little fun fact. Um, and uh, so it was between, it's interesting because it was between St. Joe's University and Villanova. And uh, I ended up going just, and they're rivals uh, over here, um, you know, especially back then when there was the, the big five and they used to play each other at the palestra. Um, so that was a big rival. Um, and, uh, but I got, a, I got a scholarship to St. Joe's. So I went to St. Joe's. And then a year after I was at St. Joe's, my dad got the, uh, the job of Villanova men's soccer coach. So the rivalry was really lots of fun, lots of fun uh, Sunday family dinners with the, uh, the, the, the heat of that rivalry. It was, it was very fun. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, now, you, it's interesting. I think the one consistent uh, characteristic of people running for judge this year 
um, in the interviews that we've done uh, is people have spent time in theater. Musical, was it musical theater or dramatic theater? It was both. It was both. And I was, uh, I, I was big into it. It's, uh, you know, especially in high school. It started as a kid uh, at, at about nine years old. Um, and then, uh, and then school and college and beyond college, I, uh, I, I did, you know, some commercials and voiceovers and things like that, but didn't go too far, too, too far into it. I, I was never one to want to be a waitress and try to make, you know, to try to make it. Cause I was around so many talented individuals and did so many productions with so many talented individuals who who were making a go of it and uh it just uh it, it so much of it was luck and so much of it was just doggedness and I just uh I I, I wanted a more conventional lifestyle <laughs> so you decided to run for judge there statewide <laughs> there you go so what was your favorite role uh in musical theater so in in musical theater um let me see Probably two different roles. So one was Anita in West Side Story. Oh, great! Um, and I did West Side Story three times, and I had a different I had a different role each time. But Anita was a, was a super uh, cool character for me, um, a lot like me, um, but a lot of things to learn about a culture and and sort of subsume in your in your acting. Um, and she was pro America, and a lot of the you know a lot of the the individuals in the in the gang were not, and so there was that that rub and you know that 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 urban you know the the urban conflict. So that was an amazing role, and she was very sassy, and I like to consider myself pretty sassy. So <laughs> that you know, was there's a, there's a new uh, version of West Side Story coming out this fall. Oh really? Yep. On, bro awesome. on Broadway. Uh, no, in uh, in the movies. Oh really? What's no. it called? It's called West Side Story. Oh, so um, it's just an updated, an, an updated, updated version. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So should uh, we do it? I like to live in America. Everything's no. free in America. America. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, next and time. And then my other, my other favorite character, but it was, it was mostly, it was mostly because of how much I learned about life from the entire show. Was uh, I played Cinderella in Into the Woods, mm. um, and that, and I'm a, I'm a Sondheim, you know, fanatic. Um, and so uh, that role was so good for me. The cast that I was in was amazing. And there was just so much to learn about life uh, from, from that musical. So that was, that was probably, uh, that's probably my, my ultimate favorite, but, um, but those two roles are the ones that I enjoy. Well, that's fantastic to know. And you should know. Uh, I have to plug Justice Todd because you know that she um, was has an incredible voice and appeared many times before in the uh, Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera. Oh so, no way! Yeah, so you'll be able to, you know, you should sing together. So, I was going to say maybe we can do a duet. That would be fabulous. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you studied uh, political science and government. I did. That's what was your degree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was what sort of got you in that direction all of a sudden you shifted from all the things you just discussed to, into a career in law and, and politics? So I think um, I've always my, my father was always he was sort of I call him an armchair politician. He, he was he was always very into current events. He used to get the inquirer every day. And he would sit at the dinner table uh, with us and he would read, we would each have to read an article um, and then he would give us each a side and say, and we'd be like, well, we're not on that side. We don't wanna do that. And, and he, it doesn't matter, take the side, argue it. Um, and so that really got me into current events. It also got me into seeing that, you know, being an advocate is not always about, uh, you know, wanting that side. Um, but you still have to learn how to make the argument. So I, I guess I guess that really teed me up for wanting to, wanting to be an, an attorney. But I loved being with him and talking about politics. And uh, we used to watch, and I, I miss it. I, we used to watch the McNeil Lair Hour together uh, mm -hmm. uh, when I could, you know, when I was younger. And then, of course, you know, in college when I when I, when you know, catch when catch can sort of thing, but because we didn't have, you know, DVRs and you couldn't watch things on demand and all that kind of stuff. So, right. um, so all that, that really sparked my interest. And, uh, and I, and I loved, uh, I, I loved sitting with him and, 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 and sort of working all that stuff out. 
Great. That's helpful. Thank you very much. So um, explain to me, you, you finished college in around uh, 2001, I mean, uh, 1991, but you took a little bit of time before going to law school. Right. So I, uh, I, was, I graduated 93 from St. Joe's University. Uh, I grew up in a very blue collar neighborhood in Philadelphia. Um, and I sort of backed, backdoored away into a double major. Uh, I took a lot of German just because it was a liberal arts degree and I love, I love the language. I took it in high school. And so I started re, you know, doing classes about the literature and uh, learning. we learned a lot about the Amish and things like, things like that. So it ended up, they said, you, know, you, you could actually do this as a major, you've taken so many classes. So um, because I had the scholarship, I couldn't, I couldn't go abroad for six months. So I talked to my parents and I said, you know, I, I think I want to find a program uh, where I can go to Germany and, you know, and, and, and be immersed in the, you know, in, in the culture and the language. Um, so they said, hey, now's as good a time as any, um, you know, you get out of school and you don't have any responsibilities and you don't have your, you're not on your, you know, career path or anything like that. So I decided to do uh, to apply for a bunch of programs in Germany, and uh, I landed on a program where we got to be uh, sort of assistant English teachers uh, at a boarding school. And uh, so I, I took the opportunity to travel uh, extensively and also to be immersed in in, in the in the German culture, uh, such as it was in southern Germany. And when I got there, I realized, oh wow, it's just like America. You know, you go from place to place, the culture is a little bit different. Right. Um, so I was in a rural area, which I'd never been in in my life. I'd always been in the city. Uh, mm -hmm. so that was a cultural shock. But then you, you have the language barrier over top of it. But it, it worked out. It showed me a lot about myself um, and, and my wherewithal and, uh, and the ability to, to, to adapt. So I had a great time. I stayed there uh, over a year, a little less than two years. And, um, and when I got back, uh, you know, I, I, I hadn't gone into that much debt uh, for, for undergrad. And, uh, you know, my mom and dad couldn't afford to pay for law school. Um, so before I went into all the debt, I, I, I didn't, I wanted to make sure I wanted to be a lawyer because there were a bunch of people I knew who were lawyers and didn't necessarily want it or like it. Um, it was just sort of a, that was the next step after undergrad. So I went and I was a paralegal um, and I, I landed at, uh, I eventually landed at uh, the Philadelphia DA's office and I just, I was part of, uh, part of that program as a paralegal. I got to see the inside of a courtroom. I got to watch people uh, do the prosecutorial thing. And I was like, yes, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be uh, in a courtroom. So you add out the, the acting skills and the ability to communicate with people and communicate and emote and, and connect on that emotive level. Uh, and I thought, wow, this plays right into those talents uh, that, that I've cultivated all my life, but, um, but it, it adds you know, the law to it. Thank you for that fulsome explanation. That's really helpful. I think uh, what I wanna do is I want, let's jump to uh, tell. And okay. uh, I know show and tell when you were growing up caused you anxiety, but I hope it didn't cause you anxiety today. What did you, what did you bring to share with our political jungle viewers? So I, I wanted to just show you, there's a book that we put together. This is a, this is a picture of my, my dad. He was a first nice. lieutenant in the army. Uh, we, my sister-in-law, Heike, made this book um, back, I think it was his 70th birthday maybe a little before that, somewhere between 65 and 70. And it goes through his whole career uh, as a, uh, you know, in the army. He was in the Vietnam War. Um, this is just a picture. This isn't my actual show and tell, but. Um, yeah. So uh, he was a first lieutenant uh, in Vietnam and uh, he actually got out in front of the draft and signed up for, uh, for the, the army and went to officer school and eventually became a first lieutenant. He was in an artillery division in, uh, in, in Vietnam. And uh, why this is a part of my show and tell uh, is, is interesting. So I brought his, it's a little beat up, um, but I've, I, I keep this near and dear to my heart and I need to get it preserved. But he has two bronze stars uh, mm. for bravery um, from Vietnam. And, um, but what's even more interesting than his bravery and his service is that 
when we were growing up, he never talked about it very much. And uh, it was just sort of, he's a, he's a compartmentalizer. So I think he just said, that's in the past, I'm raising my family and, and moving on. Um, but when I was in eighth grade, I knew um, he, my mom had a lockbox. And in that lockbox, she kept things like birth certificates and you know important documentation. Sure. But she kept his bronze stars and his purple heart, which he got in their velvet cases. And of course I'm an eighth grader and I'm like, wow, look at those, are, those are really cool. But at the time uh, it was very hip in the eighties to wear like an army jacket and wear right. like fake medals, you know what I mean? Fake ones. <laughs> right, right. Well, as an eighth grader, right? I, I didn't know what they were because it was never described to me. Um, I put them on before a grade school dance and I put them on my jacket and I guess my mom didn't realize it. And, you know, she drove me and my, my friends to the dance. And when I got home, my dad was on the couch and he looks at my jacket and he goes, where did you get those? <laughs> and I was like, that lockbox upstairs, they're so cool. Like, he's like, Megan. And, but at that point it opened up a dialogue between oh. us because he explained what they were. And from that point on, my perspective of him changed and I, you know, and, 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 and it evolved. And so that's why that's my, my show and tell, because I always look back to his bravery mm. and, uh, and, and his ability to, to, to kind of push it aside in order to raise his family, the selflessness of, uh, of him to do that because he never wanted to, you know, to share his, you know, traumatic you know experience because he was shot um and, mm -hmm. and, sure. and and came home and um so yeah so so that well, was thank goodness super cool yeah. thank goodness you didn't lose the uh, medals at the dance let's put it that way oh, so uh right. yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah my dad was in the korean war and i used to borrow all of his stuff and uh, i either lost or destroyed most of it so um <laughs> that taught me patience <laughs> Um, exactly. with my children um, yes yes absolutely right. and he was patient he just his initial reaction was just like he had seen a ghost yeah um, yeah <laughs> and he was like let me explain sure. what these are and i'm like oh god i shouldn't have worn those saint tim's dance weeks so well, that's 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 really inspiring <laughs> and i i really appreciate you sharing that with us mm -hmm. we, we have uh this section of the show called deep dive where we talk about who inspired you and what gets you up in the morning what keeps you up at night and what you want to be when you grow up and i think clearly your dad for you has been a great inspiration. In your life. He has along along with my mom as well. Um, my mom is a little bit of a different story, um, but they're they are clearly my inspirations and have always allowed me to follow the path that uh, you know after talking me through it, um, you know that that I wanted and that I desired. So the both of them, my mom didn't was a high school graduate um, from Little Flower High School in Philadelphia. And she married my dad very young, had us three kids by the time she was 25. And, uh, you know, we always was stay at home mom. I mean, she would work jobs. She worked at a daycare, for a friend of hers own so that, you know, she could, you know, pay the bills and whatever, but we could also eat lunch there and, you know, go, go school when we were there. And um, I just always thought she was the selfless, you know, stay at home mom. And she just was going to kind of, you know, have her life surrounded around the family and kids. And then my brother um, actually uh, went off, my baby brother went off to um, undergrad. And we were talking one night, I'd just come back from, and she said, I think I'm going to go back to school. And I, I just looked at her like, really? Like, why? And she said, because I've always wanted my degree. And, and, and that's that point in your life where you, you look at your parents differently, right? She had that dream the whole time, but she was, she was being patient and allowing and, and, and growing her children and keeping them on their way uh, before, she, uh, before she was going to get that bucket list filled. And, uh, and so she, she went to St. Joe's and she now has two master's degrees and, uh, and, you know, graduated with like a three, nine, I mean, she, wow. it's amazing. And so that, uh, that always just showed me that, you know, life isn't over after you, you know, after a certain point, you're always yeah. growing, you're always learning. That's, uh, you know, the second uh, component of, of our deep dive is motivation. Obviously your mom 
had something that got her up in the morning. Uh, how about you? What gets you up? Uh, I, obviously, you, you've spent time doing child abuse prosecution. You've got two kids of your own that uh, you know you, you care for. So talk to us a little bit about what gets you up. What's your motivation? So yes, my, my advocacy for children, I, I would like to continue it uh, even if, if I become a judge um, is, you know, it, it, it's here and it's, it's always here. And, you know, during COVID, I, I, I just, you know, I, I felt for so many kids who um, didn't have eyes on them in classrooms, uh, you know, because many of the child abuse you know, teachers are the are, are, are mandatory reporters, and they would often report. And I just um, would often think, I, I hope, I hope children are being protected. I hope you know things aren't going under the radar um, just because we're all in indoors. So that was a big that was a big thing and a big issue for me, um, and 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 did keep me awake and and, and kept me very prayerful um, that that uh, the children were safe. Any child, it doesn't matter. And then it my advocacy has just gotten more intense because I have my own children. Um, you know, I knew, I knew they would be okay, uh, even though it wasn't an ideal situation. Um, they were safe, they were loved. And those were the, those are the two things that make children grow, safety and love. And um, so I knew that they, I know that they're gonna be okay. They might've missed a year of academics, but that's okay, they can make that up. But they were safe, they were loved, they were fed. And that was the thing that kind of worried me the most about the lockdown and COVID. About uh, what, uh, what you talked a little bit, alluded to it, uh, what keeps you up at night, perspiration. Um, let's talk about the fact you went, you went to, uh, graduated from Temple and went to Montgomery McCracken, one of the premier white shoe law firms in Philly. And, and uh, you were there after a year, you moved on to your next job, and then you've, you've had a number of interesting legal jobs over the year from uh, deputy AG to being back in a civil firm and then being at Westchester University where you're assistant general counsel. What, what, uh, you're a rolling stone, where do you gather the moss? <laughs> so I think, um, is a big piece. I think, um, giving back service is a huge piece of, 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 of what made me want to practice to protect the uh, victims of crime, but also protect the citizens of the Commonwealth uh, as a prosecutor. That was always my job. That was always my focus. Um, then when I, I left to go back into civil practice, because I had done three years in the appeals division, I, uh, I'd done every type of line DA prosecution you could do. And then I did the which was probably the most intense portion of my career period. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just needed to, to move on into the civil world. And I loved Westchester University, but I'm, I'm meant to be in a courtroom. I'm, uh, that's, what, that's how I'm built. Um, so that's why I went into the civil litigation practice because a partner from Montgomery McCracken, who I really liked and respected, went out and, and started his own boutique sort of practice. And uh, he was, you know, we, met each other at the Chester County Bar Association. And he said, hey, you know, if you're ever looking, let me know. And so there I was, I wanted to get back into a courtroom. So, yeah. um, and my civil litigation even was, uh, you know, some somewhat of service. I mean, I did civil rights defense, um, employment law. So um, I, I felt like taking, especially police officers, corrections officers, um, um, I guess, uh, social workers, uh, professors, taking them through a system that they were never part of uh, before. And, and they get, you know, they get scared, they get fearful, their, their reputations, the monetary process, all those mm -hmm. sorts of things. Taking them through that um, and holding their hand and explaining it every step of the way was so important to their lives. And I think to their, to their you know, sort of mental health in the sense that I'm being sued, like in, in, it's scary. So, uh, you know, the service, the giving back, and then, and then at the AG's office, I, I did the same thing. Well, I, time just flies. So we're, <laughs> we're going to just does. fly right into uh, rapid response, the, okay. the last part of the show. So we've got a couple how minutes. How rapid is rapid? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, well, it's not rapid. It's rapid, but it's, it's, it's <laughs> we'll call it the mother, mother goose version of a okay. rapid, okay. rapid, rapid response. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, Chester, PA or Chester, England? 
Did you know that Chester was named for Chester, England? Yes, uh, Chester, Chester, PA, definitely. Yeah, okay, good, good choice. All right, <laughs> that, uh, now uh, how about Chester or Westchester? I'd have to say, mm, that's a hard one. My, my nephew uh, just signed with the union uh, Philadelphia Union at the uh, ripe old age of 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't know if you know, but the, the Philadelphia Union's stadium is in Chester. Uh, so, uh, and my, my cousin Chris is in the front office there at the, at the Philadelphia Union. And the, we know the coach because my dad coached him at Villanova. So, oh, so you're not talking near, about the near, Union. Near, you're you're that, talking about that, that, Yeah, uh, that venue is near and dear to me. But I have to uh, say uh, after, after practicing for uh, probably, you know, 14 or 15 years out of my career in Westchester, it's, uh, it's special. It's a special place and it's my legal family. Now, did you know that uh, Turk's Head was the original name of Westchester? I do, I do, and that they broke <laughs> off of Chester, and that's why it's Westchester. All right, Valley Forge or the Battle of Brandywine? I'm going to go Valley Forge because I go there often to to walk and hike and do all that kind of stuff. No, you're a big hiker. We're going to touch on that in a second. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a lot of Chester stuff here, so uh, yeah, that's great. Andy, Jamie, or N. C. Wyeth? Andy. I gotta go Andy. I had to go Andy. I just read a book about him that, that a, a friend of mine wrote. Um, and so, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool, yeah, they're, they're local heroes, kind of like our uh, Mr. Rogers. There's a um, Samuel Barber. Did you, you know, do you know who Samuel Barber is? I didn't know, but- did I didn't, you know? I don't. So Sam, I'm gonna ask you Samuel Barber or Thomas Buchanan Reed, but the reason is, so Samuel Barber, is the mo one of the most famous composers of the 20th century. He wrote Adagio okay. for Strings, which you know because it's like the theme music from, from uh, some very famous films. Okay. But, um, play sometime, uh, look up Samuel Barber. I will. Uh, all right, Westchester University or Cheney University. Well, I had to go Westchester University because that's where I worked and, uh, and I love the administration there and I love their model for education is, is, is really second to none in the, uh, in the PASHI system. St. Joe's Hawk or Temple's Owl? The hawk will never die, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, hiking trails. Chester Creek, Rocky Run, or Pocopson? Did I say that right? No, yeah, you said Pocopson right. Um, give me the first two again. Chester Creek, mm -hmm. Rocky Run, okay. or Pocopson? I got to go Rocky Run. Definitely. How about preserves, Cheslin or Stroud Red? I'm not familiar with either of those. So Stroud Red looks like it gets like five stars on the, the hiking sites in, in your backyard. I, I know gotta, you love to hike. I got to get, yeah, I got to get, I got to get there. I'm not, I'm not familiar. You're running for office. It's okay. It's not a problem. <laughs> All right. Um, mushrooms. Kennett Square or the mushrooms of Kennett Square or the beer of Victory Brewing. I got to go with the Kennett Square mushrooms. They're they're uh, they're the world leader in mushrooms. All right, and uh, Victories. Since we're talking about Victory Brewing, Twisted Tart or Sour Monkey. Twisted Tart or Sour Monkey. I'm going to go Twisted, even though that has a huge, hot, really high alcohol content because I've been there. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I could have maybe, I, I'd have to split that one with somebody. <laughs> well, it's only Monday morning. Well, listen, <laughs> right. uh, Megan Sullivan, thanks so much for uh, daring to come into the political jungle and uh, for, for daring to, to run for statewide office. I wish you much success. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me on. Take care. You got it. We'll see everybody next time on The Political uh -huh. Jungle.